Welcome to the Women's Sanctuary, the podcast about tending the soul of women, sisterhood, and the rise of the sacred feminine. I'm your host, Arlia Hoffman. Hi there, welcome to the Women's Sanctuary. I'm your host, Arlia Hoffman. Um, today I want to share um, what's going on kind of in the cosmos, what's happening in the 3D, and also share a little bit about my conversation with love lately. Um, but first I want to address an upcoming episode. Last time I mentioned I might be doing an episode on grief and I am going to do that. Um, I'm working on it. It's hard to get out of my own way. I, you Maybe you can relate um, because I'm not an expert. Um, but I am an <laughs> I am an expert in life and life brings pain and grief. Um, and for me, there's a recent loss. Um, and so um, I'm working on that episode that will be coming soon. I'll have some resources and some just some maybe just some um, general help and support based on my own experience. Again, I'm no expert, but I will offer what I have and hopefully it'll be helpful to you. Um, I definitely also have a couple of, I have resources, but I also want to um, invite a guest or two to talk about grief. So I'm working on that and I'll keep you posted as that evolves. Um, so as you may know, I'm quite the... Um, follower of Lorna Bevins of Hair in the Moon Astrology. And every month she does a 5D astrology report and I'm a subscriber and it's it's just a few dollars a month. So if you are at all interested in astrology and psychology and uh, society and like how that impacts us personally and collectively, I would highly recommend subscribing. Like, that's just my personal opinion. <laughs> like, Lorna doesn't even know I'm I'm offering this, but, you know, um, she has given me permission to share at times of some of her work here to, you know, to boost that signal. Um, and I love doing so because um, she has such a good read on what's going on. So I'm going to share a little bit from Lorna Bevins of Hair in the Moon Astrology. Um, because today, July 1st, 2021, she had a Facebook post. And it kind of also ties back into um, the 5D Astrology Report. Um, and she says, a heads up, feet on the ground and head in the clouds. Something big this way comes. And... I shared it on the Women's Sanctuary because just this morning, I got the very same message, feet on the ground, feet on the ground, and maybe even feet in the grass. For years, I have done this, um, a Buddhist walking meditation, and in the way I do it, um, I very gently walk as I walk with each step, it's toes first and then heels very deliberately and gently with Mother Earth, preferably in the grass, but wherever you can walk barefoot, um, it becomes quite the walking meditation to be in intimate connection with Pachamama, our Mother Earth. And so that helps literally keep me grounded. And as I said, I'm in a season of grief. So it's what keeps me, you know, like even connected to my body. The other day I went and spread a blanket out and laid on the grass and looked up at the sky. Started to get rained on, but, you know, that's, <laughs> that's, that's a metaphor for life right there. Um, so I'm having to work pretty diligently daily in self-care um, to keep myself grounded. And so that's what Lorna's talking about here. 
Um, she says we're being swept out of our comfort zones by a huge transpersonal energy wave as both Neptune and Jupiter inside Pisces are turning retrograde. Oh, she says Jupiter is the archetype of opportunity, growth, optimism, and solutions, while Neptune's Hall of Mirrors brings escapism, release, relief, and holidays from reality. Somewhere in your life, themes of disillusion, final endings, loss, crunch points for toxic habits, and union with something greater than you are playing out. And I've definitely felt that in in my own life. And so her word to us is to keep your feet firmly on the ground. Make the care of your physicality, your personal ecology, energy field, and stability your main priority. And then she goes on to say something that she is not alone in saying, which is issues of access to ownership of resources such as water, utilities, and food supplies are going to become more and more divisive as the, as the intensifying new weather patterns become the new normal. And then she references Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Maslow says that our most basic needs are physiological. So air, water, food, sleep, shelter, And then we move into the need for safety. After we feel like our physiological needs have been met and we have achieved some level of safety, then we can begin to feel a solid foundation from which to find love and belonging and then esteem and then self-actualization. Now, of course, this is not linear. All these systems are happening at the same time, um, but you, know, you, you may have a, a thriving, loving relationship and some level of self-esteem in the midst of an unsafe living situation, for sure. But he generally points to needing all of these basic needs um, to be met in order to self-actualize. And for him, self-actualization is um, really um, meeting and fulfilling your own potential. And then later he expounded on that and added beyond that, this sense of altruism and um, altruism and spirituality, putting yourself into context into the larger field of life. Okay, now that we've had Psychology 101, badly, (laughs) um, you know, I think it just provides context for, as a reminder of kind of part of the human journey. And also the resilience of humanity. I mean, there are many people without um, adequate physiological needs, adequate safety, um, or they've got you know trauma or PTSD because they didn't have safety in childhood. And yet they are self-actualized, they are motivated, they know who they are, they know why they're here, and they are living spiritually and fulfilling their own potential. This feels important to me because we're entering a time where that paradigm is upended. Everything around us is changing. And I'll go on out on a limb here and say, if it hasn't changed yet, just wait, it's coming. And I do not share that to be promoting fear. And we all have to be 
aware and prepared for how we navigate these days and the future. And I don't even really know what's coming. I don't know what's coming. I just know massive change is upon us. And um, 2020 was kind of the, just the first piece. One of my themes and the themes of other teachers has been returning to self-care. And that's really what Lorna is getting at. And in her 5D report, um, she goes further into suggesting that we return to very basic self-care. It reminds me of one of the first things I do with my clients, women in the throes of a transformation of some sort in their life, is we return to basic self-care. And I ask them to make a list of the things that bring them joy, to bring them peace, that bring them back to themselves. And it's got to be concrete basics. It is reading a book, watching the sunrise, drinking a cup of coffee on the front porch, barefoot in the grass, sitting in the grass, taking a walk, watching a funny funny video and laughing with your children, whatever it takes, drinking a glass of water. It has to be concrete and simple. Most of the complexities of our lives have been created by a societal system which is breaking down. And when we return to basics, we return to the earth, we return to community, we return to our connections with each other, with our families, our lovers, our children, the elderly neighbors we help take care of. These basics are the basics of being human. And those are the things that will sustain us, regardless of what the change looks like. You know, there was a kind of this thought going around in early 2020 that we should return to gardening and growing our own food. And I think the day is coming where that will be very important. We've established a friendship with two neighbors. And between the three of us, we can grow various, you know, veg- fruits and vegetables and, and herbs. We're nowhere near being self sufficient, but we're working towards it. So, my invitation to you is what can you do? for yourself, your family, your loved ones, something small and grounded, literally, and concrete. You could start with a list of the things that support you, a list of the things that would support you and your family in the physical world, such as growing herbs or... um, creating an outdoor space for relaxing and being together or setting aside time weekly for family time or committing to calling your loved ones and relatives weekly to check in on them or maybe adopting an elderly neighbor you can check in on from time to time and who might let you be helpful with the things they need. My friends, the time for being wrapped up in your ego and afraid to reach out and build community is over. This is, in the age of Aquarius, this is the age of community. The age when we take care of each other, we tend ourselves. We tend each other. We tend community. We tend Mother Earth. 
And so without fear or anxiety, just breathe. (sighs) Breathe with me. Bring it back down into your body. Get on the earth. Get basic. You know, life is going to continue to go on around us. Like, okay, we're still, we still have Bitcoin and mortgages and um, electric cars and flying cars. Like, technology continues. Life continues and things get more complicated around the planet. I'm not saying that's going away. But I am saying, just as last year, in 2020, things changed in unimaginable ways, that could happen again. And so what are the lessons from last year? What did you learn? I learned how valuable the basics are. I learned how to focus on my family and nourish and nurture my home life. And that felt so rewarding. The key here is, the key tool for you is your intuition. What are you being led to do? What are you being led to focus on? Like for me, this morning, the message was, feet on the ground, feet in the grass, get grounded. And that was echoed in Lorna's post. For all of us, trusting and listening to your intuition always pays dividends. I've learned that when you trust your intuition and you follow it, it gets louder and it gets more reliable. That doesn't mean you won't falter and you'll fall, do what you think was following your intuition and you fall flat on your face because it was really just your ego trying to trick you. Well, that's what egos do. But really getting quiet and listening to your heart and what's rising from within you as your calling in life as you live your daily life. That's what you can trust. That's absolutely going to be what you can trust now and in the future. Okay. Um, And actually, uh, it takes me back. This takes me back to Lorna. Because she suggests um, creating um, things you can trust, a list of things you can trust. And so that gets back to the tangible, concrete things you can do for yourself. It is the things you can trust that will be there and that will support you and ground you so that no matter what happens, you have your own resources. You are resourced. You are capable. You are prepared. How can you be prepared for anything? Well, you can if you are self-resourced. And, you know, if you want to know more about how to do that, what that process looks like, how to reach that level of self-possession, if you will, just reach out to me. We can talk about it and um, I'll give you some, you know, I can give you some pointers, give you some some places to look, um, or we can just chat. I'm happy to do that. The last piece I wanted to share today is from my journal this morning. Um, As you know from last time, I'm doing this journaling exercise where I start with dear love. And love talks back, which is great. (laughs) I appreciate it when love talks to me. So before, before love gave me feet on the ground, which was really helpful, that was in reply, in reference to um, me reconnecting to source. Sometimes I'll ask individual questions, but sometimes I'll just say, you know, I'm here. What what do you say? Dear love, what do you say? And this morning she said, breathe, my child. 
this moment is all there is. It is everything. The future is nothing, no thing, not yet manifested, not yet here where you are. Dear love, where am I? Here, now here. And I said, I mean, it's hard to be here when I need to be there. And she said, you don't need to be there. If you're there, you're not here. And then there won't be by your design. It won't be by your own hand. You will call it fate, but it will be the destiny you chose by abandoning yourself here. Friends, show up for yourself here in this moment. Because what we do for ourselves here and now is everything. The future will take care of itself. And if we take care of ourselves here in this moment, we create that destiny in the future that we actually desire. I'm sending you so much love. Thank you for being here with me. I will be back again soon, either with the grief episode, if it's ready, or something else. Um, If I will have these resources in the show notes. And again, if you want to talk about anything that is in this podcast or previous episodes, feel free to reach out to me. You can email me at arlia at thewomenssanctuary.com. That's A-R-L-I-A at thewomenssanctuary.com. And actually, you know, it's it's um it's on the show page. You can just click that link and get in touch with me. I am happy to talk um, about anything you've heard on the podcast. Thank you so much for being here with me. I appreciate it. Um, take good care of yourself, and I will see you here again next time here on the Women's Sanctuary. Mm-hmm.